Uh, we know that there's fluctuating prices of nitrogen and phosphorus from year to year when you go to buy them from the fertilizer plant. And so really, can we benefit more from utilizing manure wastes or manure nutrients uh, just by managing our beef cows outside of that dry lot pen? The Beef Research School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by the Beef Cattle Research Council. Oh, absolutely. I think a producer should be looking at the age of that particular pasture stand. They should be looking at the management, grazing management of that pasture stand over consecutive years. And we typically see that uh, perennial pastures, once they're seeded, will start to lose production, will start to reduce biomass and quality after that fourth or fifth year. And so there needs to be an approach uh, beyond that for some type of management strategy. I think that you, sh you need to look at uh, is there identification of those key species that you established, the, the high quality species, the composition is there. If there's less than 30 percent, what's the presence of invasive species? Do we need to control those? And also, is there, is there good biomass going into the next growing season? And so if there is, if there's evidence of, of those productive species, yes, we can look at some type of fertility management. If we see uh, botanical composition of those productive species less than 40 percent, then possibly we have to look at a more invasive approach or a more dramatic approach like a break and reseed and then totally take that pasture out of production for one calendar year. Well, really it's about a fertility program utilizing inorganic or organic sources of, of nutrients and so you have to justify the cost of buying inorganic sources of, of nitrogen or phosphorus like urea or ammonium nitrate or do we use livestock manure, uh, beef cattle manure, when well, we know there's uh, obviously levels of phosphate and or ammonium or nitrate nitrogen in, in beef cattle manure and so is that going to really benefit that pasture long term. Well, we, we go back to ways of rejuvenating pasture by managing our beef cattle through that fall or winter program, and bale grazing is, is a great strategy. However, I think it's really dependent on the animal density that you're using out there. We've done some, some work out here at Western Beef looking at high stock densities on a bale grazing program, say 800 cow days per acre, and we've seen the benefits of bale grazing on those sites. In fact, we saw a two to three times increase in soil nitrogen uh, the following spring and a, and a doubling in impact of the biomass the following spring too from that bale grazing event. We've also done some extensive bale grazing on annual crop field where we use a lower stock density, 140 cow days per acre. And we saw obviously lower levels of phosphorus and nitrogen being left out there in the field the following spring. So I think it, a producer really needs to plan on the stock density of his cows, look at the site, look at the placement of the bales, and then kind of figure out what do I want to have for deposition rates of those nutrients the following spring without being, being an issue in terms of environmental impact. If you have uh, increased density of those bales on your gray site, you're going to see increased deposition of manure and urine nutrients. And so there, there may be an overloading aspect. And so possibly spacing your bales uh, in a grid pattern to reduce that concentration of those nutrients is a good strategy. And move that site from one location to the next on your ranch or your farm. And looking at those areas on your ranch or your farm where there's nutrient deficiency. And, so, and not to repeat that bale grazing event over consecutive years. Possibly come back to it every second or third year. Well, what you have to do is look at the cost of that investment on a per acre basis. And so what did it cost me on a per pound basis of that nutrient that I applied on that land base? And where's my break even? How much biomass increase do I need to benefit to justify the input costs of that nutrient? 
and in many cases you're going to ex exceed that biomass and so any extra is surplus. And so if you see that surplus and you're able to meet your break even point, you just increase your stock density. You can increase your grazing capacity, your stocking rate of that particular land base if it's a pasture or you can also utilize that by increased yield uh, if you're taking that particular forage as a hay.